In this presentation, we're going to show you how to calculate simple interest and discounts. It's for level two math students. The aims of the session are to sh show how to calculate simple and compound interest using formulas and to work out discounted values and percentages on amounts of money. There will be some quiz activities along the way, so please have a pen and paper or electronic device to write on with, and you may use a calculator when you're attempting the quizzes. What is simple interest? Simple interest is when a percentage rate is applied to the same amount a number of times. The amount of interest earned will stay the same every year. So this is the amount of interest that will have to be paid back over a period of time. To work out simple interest, we use a simple formula. And that formula is I equals P times R times T divided by 100. In this formula, I equals the amount of interest. So that's ultimately what we're going to try and work out. P stands for principal sum, which is the initial amount of money invested or loaned. R is the rate of the percentage, the percentage rate. And T stands for time, which is usually the number of years in which that money has to be paid back over. Let's see it in context. So we have an example here. Calculate the amount of simple interest built up on an initial amount of £750 on a percentage rate of 8% saved over three years. So using the formula I equals P times R times T divided by 100, I'm going to, to uh, replace the letters in the formula with, their, uh, with the relevant um, numbers that match each part of that formula. So P, the initial sum, would change into 750. R, the percentage rate, would change into 8. And T, the time in which that's going to have to be, um, in which that interest builds up over, would change to 3. So I would start by multiplying together 750 times 8 times 3. Multiply all those numbers together, that gives an answer of 18,000. Then I'm going to divide that figure by 100. So 18,000 divided by 100 equals 180. So the simple interest built up over the three years is 180 pounds. So here's a short quiz for you to work on in which to try and work out um, the amount of interest built up out of the, um, the figures uh, and percentage rates that we'll use in the um, I equals P times R times T divided by 100 formula. Um, I'm just going to read out the calculations for anybody who um, may be following this, this video who maybe has a visual impairment, so you have a chance to note them down. There are four calculations that you're going to have to do all together. Uh, in the first instance, um, P will equal 450, R will equal 5, and T will equal 2. In the second instance, P will equal 3,800, R will equal 15, and T will equal 5. In the third calculation, P will equal 2180, 2180, R will equal 20, and T will equal 5. And in the fourth and final calculation, P will equal 4555, 4555, five, five. R will equal 40, 40, and T will equal 7. You'll multiply all of those figures together and divide them by 100 in order to find out the rate of simple interest on each calculation. When I finish speaking, there will be a 10 second lag before I go on to the next slide. So you may like to pause the video now so that you can do your workings out. And here are the answers. So the interest built up on the first calculation would be 45 pounds. The interest built up on the second calculation would be 2,850 pounds. The interest on the third calculation would be 2,180 pounds, eight zero. And the interest on the final calculation would be 12,754 pounds. Simple interest and total amounts. Sometimes you'll get questions where you'll not only have to work out the amount of interest that needs to be, um, that will be built up over a period of time, but you need to add that interest to the uh, initial amount in order to find out how much needs to be paid back 
uh, over a period of time. This usually relates to questions where uh, people have taken out loans uh, which would have to be paid back. If we have a look at the, uh, the example here, Greg takes out a £2,000 loan. The loan has an interest rate of 5% and is to be paid back over three years. How much in total will Greg have to pay back? So in this question, you have to work out how much interest has been built up over three years and the total amount that needs to be paid back, which will be the value of the loan, in this case £2,000, plus the interest built up over the three years. So to begin with, we would use the I equals P times R times T divided by 100, simple interest formula, in order to work out the amount of interest. So looking at the figures we've been given, uh, we would replace P with 2,000, R with 5, and T with 3. And we would multiply those together. 2,000 times 5 times 3 would equal 30,000. We would then divide that figure by 100. So 30,000 divided by 100 would equal 300. So the amount of interest that's going to be built up over, on, uh, over the, the time of paying back that loan will be 300 pounds. We would add that 300 pounds to the 2,000 pound loan that needs to be paid back. So 2,000 pounds plus 300 pounds means that the total amount that needs to be paid back will be 2,300 pounds. So we have three calculations for you to work out here. In each instance, you're going to need to uh, work out the amount of simple interest, first of all, that will be built up over the, uh, over, the, over the periods, and then add that interest figure to the loan amount uh, that will be mentioned at the beginning of each calculation. So to work out the amount of simple interest, you'll do I times uh, P times R times T, uh, and divide by 100. Uh, so I'm going to read these out. So how much has to be paid in total in the following instances? A £4,000 loan at 10% interest over four years. A £15,000 loan at 15% interest over seven years. And a £100,000 loan at 25% interest over 15 years. So when you've worked out your interest figures, add each amount of interest to the loan amounts mentioned at the start of each of those uh, each of those calculations to work out how much would need to be paid back in total. Again, there will be a 10 second lag before we go to the next slide. So you may like to pause the video now while you do your workings out. And here are the answers. So in the case of the first one, the total amount to pay back would be £5,600. This would be worked out by doing 4,000, which was the amount of the loan, times 10, which was the percentage rate, 10%, times 4, because they would need to be paid back over four years. 4,000 times 10 times 4 equals 160,000. Divide that figure by 100, that gives us an interest, uh, an interest figure of £1,600. And then we would add the £4,000 loan to the £1,600 interest, and that would give us a total to pay back of £5,600. For the second one, the amount to pay back was £30,750. This was based on a loan of £15,000, a percentage rate of 15%, to be paid back over seven years. So 15,000 times 15 times seven, equals £1,575,000. Divide that by 100, that means there's an interest rate, an interest amount to pay back of 15750 And then we would add together the loan figure, 15000 plus the interest that would be paid back, 15750 Add those two together, and that makes 30750 And the third and final one on this, the total to pay back would be £475,000. This is based on a £100,000 loan at a 25% uh, interest rate, paid back over 15 years. So 100,000 times 25 times 15 equals £37,500,000. Divide that by 100, and that equates to £375,000 in interest paid over the 15 years. 
and then add that £375,000 interest figure to the £100,000 loan, and that gives a grand total of £475,000 to pay back. We're now going to look at compound interest, which is a little bit more complicated to work out than um, simple interest. When I say that it's complicated, it's, it's fine once you know what the procedures are, um, but we just need to follow this uh, quite closely. You're given a formula to work out for compound interest, which reads as follows. A equals P, open bracket, 1 plus R divided by 100, close brackets, uh, to the value of n. Now I appreciate that that may sound a bit um, a bit difficult to take in. We will break it down in just a moment, but just to let you know what the what the letters stand for first of all, a is the amount of money accumulated after a particular number of years, including the interest. And that's ultimately what we're trying to work out: how much money has been accumulated over a period of time. P is the principal sum, so that could be the initial amount of money invested or borrowed. R is the rate of interest, the percentage figure, which is divided by 100, and whatever answer we get, we add one to that. And N stands for the number of years in which the money is borrowed or invested. Now, when I read the formula out, I said that, um, looking at the information in the brackets, I read it as A equals P, open brackets, one plus R divided by 100, close brackets, to the value of N. What that means is, is that whatever your percentage rate is, when it's divided by 100 and you add one to that figure, whatever N is, whether it's two or three or four, you will have to multiply the percentage rate that you've calculated in those brackets by itself according to, the num according to whatever number N is. So if N is two, you will have to square whatever your percentage rate is. If n is three, you will have to cube your percentage rate, by which I mean that if your percentage rate equates to say 1.06, and you have a two where the, where the n was, then what you would need to do is you would do 1.06 times 1.06. If it's a three, you would do 1.06 times 1.06 times 1.06. Let's have a look at it in context. So we're going to use the formula A equals P, open brackets, 1 plus R divided by 100, close brackets to the value of N. And we're going to do it with a situation where £1,000 has been invested at a 4% interest rate over three years. The first thing we're going to work out is the information within the brackets, first of all. We're going to change all that so we have a numerical figure. Um, we're going to replace R, which is the percentage rate, with 4, because that is the uh, percentage rate, uh, percentage interest rate in this example, 4%. 4 divided by 100 equals 0 0.04, and if I add 1 to that, it now becomes 1.04. Now, this interest rate has to be paid over three years, so the letter N would be replaced by a three. But what I have to do, according to this formula, is I take that 1.04 uh, um, interest rate and I times 1.04 by itself three times. So I do 1.04 times 1.04 times 1.04 to show that that was a repeated rate that was done over three years. It gives me an answer of 1.12, and that's done to two decimal places. It could be 1.1 if I was to do it to one decimal place, but considering that the um, percentage rate after we had done the calculation within the, uh, within the brackets was 1.04, I've done the answer to two decimal places as well, 1.12. So I'm now gonna multiply that figure, 1.12, by 1,000 pounds which was the amount of money that was originally invested so 1.12 times 1000 equals 1124.86 so in total the amount of money that's been built up over those three years would come to 1124 pounds 86 of which 124 pounds 86 of that is due to the interest
I have three calculations for you to work out trying to do compound interest. In each of these, you're going to have to work out how much money was generated over the period. Um, the formula you will use again is A equals P, open brackets, 1 plus R divided by 100 to the value of N. And these are the three calculations you're going to do. £650 invested for two years at 7% compound interest. £840 invested for three years at 10% compound interest. And £1,500 invested for three years at 4% compound interest. So just if we take the first one as an example, P is going to be replaced with 650 R is going to be replaced with 7 and divided by 100, and we'll add 1 to that. And N will be replaced by 2, the number of years. Um, I'm going to give a 10 second lag after I finish speaking before we look at the answers. And we'll do the breakdown on that. And I wish you good luck. You may like to pause the video while you try to work out these calculations. So, in order to find out the total amount of money um, built up, um, these are the answers that we come to. There, there I would allow a, a, a little degree of leeway on this as well, depending on how many decimal places we used um, when calculating the percentage rate. So, in the case of the first one, uh, the amount of money built up would be £744.18. Um, how we got to this was that our percentage rate was 7%. 7 divided by 100 would be 0 0.07. Add 1 to that, that would be 1.07. This rate was to be paid back over two years, so we would do 1.107 times 1.107. That gave 1.1449, or 1.14. Then I multiplied that by the initial amount that was invested, so 1.1449 times 650, Gave a final answer when rounded to two decimal places of £744.18. The second uh, amount came to £1,118.04. Uh, this was in a calculation where the percentage rate was 10%. So as part of the formula, we did 10 divided by 100, which would be 0 0.1. Add 1 to that, that makes 1.1. This rate would be paid back over three years. So we had to do 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1. That came to 1.331. And then I multiplied that by the 840 pounds uh, invested, initially invested, and 1.331 1 times 840 came to 1,118.04, pounds and four pence. And then in the third and final one, the final answer we got was £1,639.09. This was on a formula where it was a, where the percentage rate was 4% over three years. So 4 divided by 100 would have been 0 0.04, and then add 1 to that would make 1.04. This rate needed to be paid back over three years, or was payable over three years, so that 1.04 uh, was multiplied by itself three times. So we did 1.04 times 1.04 times 1.04. That came to 1.12. And then 1.12 times 1,500, which was the amount originally invested, meant that we uh, had a total figure over the, over the three years of £1,639.09. OK, we're going to be on slightly less formula heavy uh, ground now as we look at discounts, uh, because one thing which you may be asked to do is to calculate the uh, both discount values and discount percentages. The difference between them is that a discount value is where you work out what a new price would be after a discount has been applied. And the discount percentage is where you'll work out um, what the percentage difference is between the new and the discounted price. There is also a separate one of these videos I've done, a very brief one, uh, which will, which we will, which you can look at, which will show you how to calculate how much money to take off 
uh, when working out a discount, but that is a separate video. But in this instance, we're going to look, first of all, at how to work out what a new price is after we apply a discount. So we have an example here. A car is initially put up for sale at a price of £850. After nine months, the owner offers a discount of 20% on the price of the car. What will be the new price? So there are three stages that we follow in, in doing this. Um, the first thing I recommend is that you multiply the price of the car, the original price of the car, by the discount percentage figure. So in this instance, 850, which is the price of the car, multiplied by 20, which is the percentage discount value. So 850 times 20 equals 17,000. Then divide that answer by 100. So 17,000 divided by 100 equals 170. And then what you do is you take that 170 and take that away from the original price. 850 take away 170 equals 680. So the new price will be 680 pounds. So again, I have four questions for you to, to work through, to work out the new prices after discounts have been applied to an original price. As I say again, all you need to do, uh, take your original price, multiply it by the discount figure, uh, then divide your answer by 100 and take your answer then away from the original figure. So in the first instance, the original price is £500 and we are applying a discount of 15%. In the second instance, the original price is £1,250 and a discount figure of 25% is applied there. In the third instance, we have an original price of £5,430 and the discount will be 40%. And in the fourth and final calculation, the original price is £80,000, £80,000, and the discount is 75%. So you just need to work through those and work out what, out what the new price will be in each instance after the discounts have been applied. Again, there will be a 10 second lag uh, before we go on to the next slides to look at the answers. And here are the answers. So in the first instance, the new price would be 425 pounds. We do 500 times 15. And then with our answer, divide by 100, that would give us 75. 500 take away 75 would be 425. The new price in the second instance would be 937 pounds 50. So that would be 1,250 times 25, and then divide your answer by 100. That would mean you're discounting 312 pounds 50 from the original price. So um, 1,250 take away three, uh, 312 pounds 50 gives you a new price of 937 pounds 50. In the third instance, the new price would be 3,258 pounds. So your original price was 5,430 pounds. Times that by 40, because it was a 40% discount, and then divide the answer by 100. That's 2,172 pounds to be taken away. So 5,430 take away 2,172 equals 3,258. And finally, the new price on the fourth and final one would be 20,000 pounds. The original price was 80,000 pounds times that by 75, which was the percentage discount, 75%, and divide the answer by 100, that equals 60,000. So 80,000 take away 60,000 gives a new price of 20,000. Sometimes though you may be asked to calculate the percentage discount between two figures. So we have an example here. An artist stages an exhibition. Their paintings retail for a flat price of £350. Three months later, the paintings are selling for £200. What's the percentage discount? So in order to work this out, again, there are a couple of stages that have to be done. Start by working out what the price difference is between the original price and the new price. So here the original price was 350 and now it's 200. So if we do 350 take away 200, that shows that the difference in price is 150. Now take that price difference and divide it by the original price. So 150 divided by 350 equals 0 0.428. Now multiply 
that answer by 100 so as to convert it into a percentage. 0 0.428 times 100 equals 42.9% rounded to one decimal place. <coughs> so again, we have four calculations for you to work through in which you will need to work out the percentage difference and where required, please give your answer to one decimal place. So in the first instance, the old price is £1.85 and the new price is £1.50. In the second calculation, the old price is £37.50 and the new price is £25. In the third instance, the old price is £125.50 and the new price is £95.50. And in the final, fourth and final calculation, the old price is £2,280 and the new price is £1,920. So as we saw before, work out what the difference is in price between the old and new value. Um, divide the price difference by the old price or the original value, and then multiply your answer by 100 to convert it to a percentage. Again, there will be a 10 second lag when I finish speaking, so you may like to pause the video before going on to the next slide. And here are the discount percentages. So the first um, percentage discount was worth 18.9%. So the difference in prices was 35 pence, which we've written as 0 0.35. 0 0.35 divided by 1.85 equals 0 0.189. Uh, multiply that by 100, and that goes up to 18.9. The second uh, percentage was 33.3%. The price difference was £12.50, so we would do 12.50 divided by uh, 37.50, that equals 0 0.333 times that by 100, and that gives us 33.3%. The third discount percentage was worth 23.9%. The difference in prices was £30, 30, 30 pounds. so £30 divided by £125.50 equals 0 0.239. Multiply that by 100 to take that up to 23.9. And then the fourth and final calculation, the percentage was, uh, the discount percentage was worth 15.8%. The uh, price difference was 360 pounds. So 360 divided by 2,280 uh, equals 0 0.157. So rounded up, that was 15.8%. So to summarize, you calculate simple interest using the formula I equals P times R times T divided by 100, where P equals the amount you started with, R equals the percentage rate of interest, and T the amount of time taken. You calculate compound interest by using the formula A equals P, open bracket, one plus R divided by 100 to the value of N, where A equals the amount of money accumulated after a particular number of years, including interest. P is the amount of money that was invested or borrowed. R is the rate of interest, the percentage figure. And N is the number of years in which the money is borrowed or invested. So the figures inside the brackets will have to be multiplied by themselves according to whatever figure N is. So if N is two, then when you've worked out the figures in, inside the brackets, multiply that figure by itself twice. If n is three, then you'd multiply all the figures in the, when, when, once you've done the calculation of the figures inside the brackets, you'd multiply that by itself three times. To calculate a value discount, multiply your original value by the percentage discount, and then divide your answer by 100. And to calculate a percentage discount, calculate the difference between your original price and your new price, and then divide the difference between prices by your original price and multiply your answer by 100. If you need further work on this, and I think it would be a good idea for you to look at it uh, to get more practice, go to BKSB and go to Maths Reforms. And in the section Shape, Space and Measure, click on Measure and Level 2 Resource. And Section 1 contains further interest on interest and discounts. <laughs>